We live in a world where it's offensive to preach the gospel of Jesus and to talk about his name. And I'm here to talk about it. Welcome to the Jesus is Offensive podcast. Yo, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to the Jesus is Offensive podcast. I'm your host, Taylor Werfelman. And guess who I have this week? <laughs> it's my family. Do you guys want to say who you are? I'm Emma. You guys already know me, but yeah. Second most <laughs> watched episode. <laughs> uh, I'm Taylor's favorite mom. His my favorite one. Only mom. <laughs> and I'm the big kahuna, Brian. <laughs> you didn't say your name, Mom, but Oh, I'm Jennifer. sorry, Jennifer. <laughs> um, sick. So, yeah, this week, um, episode 10, if you've made it this far, thank you guys again for tuning in. Um, all glory to God for that. And um, this week, we're going to be talking about discipleship, which I think um, is kind of a long time coming. I've talked about all the different steps to um, becoming a disciple and like, you know, uh, just going through like being filled with the Holy Spirit, baptism, all that good stuff. Um, but in this episode, I want to talk more about um, just kind of like our experience as a family and like what we've learned doing ministry and um, yeah, helping people basically. And uh, yeah, so it's going to be a big collaborative today. But before we get started, uh, I think we should just pray. Uh, Dad, do you actually want to pray for us? Sure. Lord, we just thank you that we've uh, come together to have this time, and uh, <clears throat> we thank you, thank you that you've blessed um, this podcast, and the people that are listening today um, are the people you have chosen, Lord, to hear this special message. Um, we thank you uh, for those people, Lord, and we just ask that you reach out to them and, and touch their hearts today, Lord, and that there is something that uh, stirs inside to... Um, to find out more, to seek you more, Lord, and that you're glorified in it, Lord. Um, we thank you that our unity here as um, a family, um, you've blessed us so much, and uh, we pray that um, your word um, about discipleship is shared here, um, and the truth is revealed, Lord. We th thank you for that, and we praise you and pray all this in your son's name, Jesus. Amen. 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 So today's episode also might be a bit longer. I just realized I'm going to put the stopwatch on. Also, I just want to apologize um, that if the mics are weird, this is my first time doing three mics, and usually you'd have someone controlling everything, but my computer's sitting right here, and it's really loud, too, so you're probably going to hear it a little bit. Um, but yeah, hopefully none of that holds us back from getting this message out. So I've prepared a few questions for my special guest today, and I'm just going to pull those up real quick. Um, but yeah, today's basically just going to be a conversation. It's not, there's no pressure or anything like that. And uh, I hope you can see our hearts in what we do. And, and obviously, there's no pride in this message at all. It just, a lot of this comes from just trial and error and what has worked and what hasn't. Because mm -hmm. often we talk about that, like, you know, obviously Acts is an incredible book, especially to someone who's never experienced the Holy Spirit before. But to someone who has received the gift of tongues and has prophesied and, and has seen deliverance and stuff, there really isn't, um, I don't want to say this the wrong way, but like Acts goes from being like, oh my gosh, so many crazy things to like a few years into kind of living the way that Acts talks about. You're like, oh my gosh, there's so much it doesn't talk about that you you really just have to learn through trial and error. Um, yeah. yeah. Don't you guys think? Good point. Good point. Yeah. Totally. So I guess we'll just start with kind of a brief description of how we're here. I don't know if one of you guys want, want to handle that. It doesn't have to be super in-depth, but just like, you know. Oh, like how we got here? Mm -hmm. uh, well, yeah, I won't go too far back, but I think um, yeah. just quickly, I was raised in the church, loved Jesus my whole life, went to parochial school, youth group, the whole deal. Um, but at a certain point, I started to realize there's more. There's got to be more. Yeah. And I was... Um, I really understood the holiness of God and the friendship of, of God and Jesus. But what was missing was that third person, the Holy Spirit. And um, that's when God started to take me on a journey. And through that journey, I think probably I was sort of the first to kind of go on that journey. Trailblazer. I was a trailblazer for this 
the strip. <laughs> Here's your star. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and we're yeah. thankful. Yeah. Thank you for that. And it wasn't, you know, it was... It wasn't easy, and I had a lot of questions. I had a lot of pushback on my own self and from the family, but God brought us through it, unified us, and has shown us so much. Well, and if I can add just something for those of you out there that are listening that are um, the female um, or the wife that um, is stronger biblically or, or going to church or seeking this out first, um, I don't think you need to be concerned because... I think God uses that. God used Jennifer to pave mm. the way, and um, yeah. I know it's our, our each our own <laughs> selves to surrender. But um, just in, to encourage you that you know, in a loving way, she continued to just share um, the truth and her heart and her experience, mm. and and never in a convicting way, and just always in a kind, loving way. And she had a lot of patience, which we all know that God yeah, a lot. is full of patience. Maybe not convicting, but <coughs> it was convicting, but not condemning. Okay, yeah, yeah there you go. Right. Yeah, which is, there's a big difference, obviously. But, um, yeah, I think also it really started, and I know I've touched on this in my personal testimony, but it really started to take shape about two years ago when we just kind of, we ended up leaving leaving our church um which again like i've said in the past it's nothing against i mean it is something against the church but not to group all churches as a whole but like um just for us we felt like mostly although we did have our certain gripes with the church i think it was mostly that we almost felt hypocritical because you know we were going there for so many years and we had never made a disciple or anything and i think that's the one thing i want to mention as we get started here is like Jesus' last command to us was to make disciples, right? And yeah. so I yeah. think that really <clears throat> like convicted our hearts a bit that we're like, well, we've been doing the whole Christian walking thing for a while and never never have we like <laughs> made a disciple. Not that it's, you know, something that we can do by ourselves, but like we've never even tried, you know, yeah. it was kind of just bring them to church. Right? Yeah, it was more about inviting somebody to church or try to get them to go to church, which yeah. a lot of people have a big taboo on church instead of how do I how do I actually make a disciple or how do I actually bring somebody to surrender to Christ and live their life for for Jesus? Well, I think before too, like I remember thinking like oh I don't know if I really knew that verse, like, okay, go out and make disciples. Like I don't think I've I heard it that much, but I was always like, Oh well, the leaders in the church do that. Like, oh like I remember yeah. this guy would always stand up in church and be like, oh, I talk to people all the time at Starbucks about God or whatever, and I'm just like, oh, yeah, he's doing awesome. That's but like, I would never do that. Like, that's yeah. not my thing, you know? Yeah. But I'm more the, you know, I, p I pick up the chair. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, what are some things... Um, sorry, I can already see by watching the feed that some of the mics are going to be... So just have your ear earbuds down a little grace. bit. Grace. Yeah. Just grace. Just give us some grace. But... Um, what changes did we have to make to live this life? I briefly talked about it in my testimony, but for you guys, what are some things that you felt like? Maybe, Dad, if you want to share. Um, I would have to say the first thing is surrender. Mm. I mean, before I start choosing things that I've let go of or, or changed, I had to change my heart and what my focus was. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I think, you know, as Christians, we want to believe that, you know, there's so much grace that we can go on living the way we do and know that there's been so much grace given to us that we didn't have to worry. But right. to s completely surrender my life, my will, give up my will and see what mm. what God's will is. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And that was the big game changer for me because then when I realized that I'm living for him and not for my right. glory mm -hmm. it really changed the focus on everything yeah. so um, those I didn't have to sit there and go okay I need to get rid of this I need to get rid of that I need to get rid of this yeah. it was like what would God want me to do and you know it's cliche but the WWJD I mean what would Jesus do if you just look at that and mm -hmm. think of everything you do in life and see that WWJD mm -hmm. it changes your life yeah. but you can't just it's cliche by saying, you know, WWJD, but right. actually look at it. But it actually go, has a solid meaning. Yeah, I'm going to this movie, and he's Jesus is going to be sitting there next to me yeah. watching this movie with me. I'm feeling your catchphrase coming on here. 
Die to self? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like they just needed to that's, his, that. that's his favorite catchphrase, die to yourself. Well, I was going to ask that if you wouldn't mind. I've already kind of talked about it on the podcast. <laughs> with, I think you're fine with it. But um, just talking about uh, what it was for you, like personally, that you felt like you surrendered. And like how having the Holy Spirit, maybe just a little bit of your testimony because I think it's good. And also I just want to say on top of that is like, I want to talk about this first because like to disciple people, you first have to make yourself right with God. Obviously we're all working on it, but like, you know, you can't be helping someone else if you're in need of like help. You know, it even says in uh, first or second Timothy, I forget which one, but it's definitely there where it's like, if you can't have your own house in order. And I think that also means yourself too, you know, like if you don't have yourself in order, you can't, you can't be helping other people. So Mm -hmm. I just know that your story is pretty cool, so if you could just talk about it. Sure. Well, I think, um, honestly, the first part of it was I knew deep down inside that I'm not sure if I had the Holy Spirit, I guess, what it turned out to be. I always was taught that once you believe you, you receive the Holy Spirit. Um, Because I didn't really know scripture very well, sadly enough. But, you know, regardless of that now, um, looking back, I didn't have any evidence of it. So I just thought I've been a Christian my whole life. So I couldn't say I had it back then because I didn't know what changed in my life. Yeah. You know, and then, you know, when I did um, start looking into scripture and hearing um, what it says in the book of Acts, and what Jesus said when he, you know, left the earth and said, you, you know, stay here and wait. I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit and you're going to have power. I'm like, you're well, like, what, 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 what power how do I know that? if I have that power or not? What, what is it that I, that's different for me? Yeah. Um, so with that, I realized, though, I wasn't also living my life for him at all. I was, uh, you know, I was thinking about I really like to drink beer and. So I would always be, you know, centered around that. I had a lot of friends, Christian and non-Christian friends, that uh, knew I was a, you know, the ones that weren't Christians knew I was a Christian. But um, it was about, you know, getting together and socializing yeah. and and having beers, going place. Not that I was getting drunk, but that was that was my focal point. That was my focus. So I thought about. Yeah, and yeah. and I guess I really didn't understand what a relationship with Jesus was. You know, and and through this, you know, this journey that we were on, seeking the Holy Spirit and seeking to live our lives for Jesus and what he actually called us to do, Mm -hmm. my eyes were opened. Mm -hmm. Um, And when I did in that, when I did receive the Holy Spirit, you knew for sure. I knew (laughs) I knew. Right. And my thinking changed. Why did you know my well, I started by speaking in tongues. Yeah, I just wanted to. Um, yeah, yeah, but but I mean, along with that, became able to understand scripture. Yeah, eagerness to read the word, mm-hmm. want to know what it said. Uh, beyond S- eagerness, <laughs> <laughs> becoming a different person. Yeah. 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 Searching it out, way, searching it out myself instead Someone of just like what the read. pastor was saying or what people told me or the verses I had learned growing up yeah you know which everybody knows and i challenge anybody to you know question yourself do i have the holy spirit and if you don't or you feel like you don't or you feel like you do um do you read scripture are you embedded in the word because also just yeah i mean i know you're gonna but touch on how the power also that you finally understood because before you're like what's this power like what i've never what that's not, I don't see any power, but like what was well, I mean, I saw I saw well, I saw healings, <laughs> I saw um, God completely released me from drinking. I don't even like the taste anymore. It's and you just, had tried, I had tried to quit drinking for a year, and it was the longest year of my life. I think it was actually 10 <laughs> years <laughs> to be quite honest. Um, but I, I mean, every day was a struggle. I was thinking about it every day. And when when I had the power, when 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 I received the Holy Spirit, and you surrendered. He, I surrendered my will, and He took over, and He took it away from me. Yeah. Um, and that don't you think that was kind of the thing that was 
holding you back Definitely. from really stepping out into any sort Definitely. of leadership or trying to mentor or disciple anyone. You felt like, oh, I'm not worthy. Well, and I think I, I can't go without saying this part of it. I was taught that when you believe, you receive the Holy Spirit and you're safe. You, you won't go to hell. You're safe. You've crossed over the safe line and you went from not, I mean, not going to heaven to going to heaven. Um, and throughout Scripture talks about being able to lose your salvation. So with it, for a guy to understand that you might, you know, you yeah. might end up in hell, Jeopardy. even though you're a good person and you believe, just believe in Jesus and you are sealed. Um, I once the scripture started opening up to me and I really mm -hmm. studied them and I'm not talking about a couple verses a day, a couple chapters a day. I'm talking about spending hours in the word understanding who God is and fearing God. Yeah, I'm not and talking about an unhealthy fear that's not from the Lord. I'm talking about the fear of God that you only learn from the from the Old Testament. Reading with humility because Absolutely. if you read it with pride you're always thinking how can I justify myself through this? But Absolutely. Humility is like Wow, I'm not doing any of this. Okay, I need to. I need to shape up and like do it. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, and, and through that power of that Holy Spirit, it opened up doors. All of a sudden, it wasn't like, "How do I tell somebody about Jesus?" It's like, "I got to tell them." Yeah, and, and and this is what you need to do. This is repent. I found the way to salvation, mm -hmm. and Paul talks about in his letters about the way. Yeah, it, it, that's what it was called first. The, you know, the the um, they were called uh, Christians in Antioch first, but it was little Chris, Chris uh, little, little Christ. Christ. Yeah. It was kind of like making fun of them right. when when Paul called it the way. So it changed it from crossing over from not being saved to saved to a road. You to actually salvation. have to live out your life. Yes. It's not like yes. it's not like everything else on the earth it's where like event. you pay for it, yes. like like insurance, like. Oh, I, I, I pay for it every year or, or every month, or I go to church every weekend so like mm -hmm. I keep checking. No, it's every day living right. it so that you can receive it. And, and just because, let's say you live it out for 99 days and you don't live it out for 100, you completely turn away. Those 99 don't outweigh the, the one. It's, you, it's the full from beginning to end. That's yes. how it's, it's, it's like with a great artist. You look at the full body of work. You don't just look yeah. at like one thing, you know? I was just going to say, too, that, you know, that reminds me of the verse, like, um, friendship with the world is enmity to God. Yeah. <laughs> the right word. Um, James 4. Yeah. And because, you know, as Christians before, it was like, okay, I it's an event. Like, I said I was, I said the prayer, I received Jesus, and now I'm saved, and, like, I'm okay, you know? No, like, it's a complete life change, like, everything in your life is changed like yeah. it is a whole different life and anything that you're doing with the world is actually like hatred to god mm -hmm. and that like hit me so deep even yeah. recently i was just like wow that's yeah yeah i know well real. and if i can make just one more cap on it is um um why are we here what did jesus call us to do and yeah. you, you have to look at that and say well Jesus, right when he was leaving the earth, he told, he gave command to go and do something. So what was that? What was my goal here? It wasn't just to live life and, you know, everybody wants to say, well, God wants you to have a happy life. But he he, he asked us he to do things life. for him. He told us what to do. <clears throat> yeah. So 100%. that was a convicting thing, too. You know? Yeah. Mom, I, you, you're raising your hand. You're waving the flag. What's up? <laughs> well, I'm going <clears> to <throat> step way back, but... Uh, what Brian was saying about surrender, <clears throat> excuse me, I think um, maybe for a lot of people, what holds them back from the surrender of stepping into this lifestyle of ministry, at least for me, because I'm a people pleaser, and I that's something I struggle with, worrying about what people think, that I had to surrender my, um, my pride and uh, surrender uh, my reputation because I knew that people would be talking about me. I knew that people would see me differently. I knew that I would be judged. And I knew that um, stepping away from a lot of the things in the world that, that were made clear that I shouldn't be a part of, people would um, be hurt that I did that. And I wanted to just give a quick little story that um, prior to all this, um, 
I received a phone call, thank goodness I didn't answer it, <laughs> because it was a long uh, message they left me. And this person it was an older person who I respected in the faith. And she went on to tell me that um, our family was lukewarm and that she couldn't believe that we had allowed Ouch. her. Yeah, that was, that was painful. <laughs> she went and got us on yeah. that one. <laughs> she was upset that we had let our children be a part of a, a particular musical theater program uh, show. And I was really like, wow. How dare she say that? Can you believe you know, that? We were all that. so offended by it. I homeschooled my kids, and I've taught them about Jesus their whole life, and and she's saying that. How dare she? But you know what? She was absolutely right. And, she didn't and, say it in a loving way. Yeah, it wasn't very loving, <laughs> but maybe that's how God wanted me to hear it. And you know, Jesus is so clear in Revelation when he speaks to the church in Laodicea, and he says, "I will spit you out of my mouth if you are lukewarm." And, uh, that's, uh, that's you know, we were the lukewarm tough. Christians. We were um, sitting on both sides of the fence, enjoying our friendship with the world, but loving the Lord, loving Jesus, loving his word. I mean, I've been in Bible study my whole life, but but still not understanding. We were hearers, but we weren't doers of the word. And I was going to say, just going back, because I think you connected it accidentally, but even what I was talking about last week in the podcast about fear that is also being of the world because you're worried about exactly. how people are going to th- think of you, you know, and you exactly. think, oh, I'm not a friend of the world, like, because yeah. I don't, but even your uh, perception in the world is, can be seen as fear. If, but anyways, if we spent that much time trying to please Jesus. Right. We would be in a lot different mm. scenario. Mm. Um, so anyways, just, just, uh, I love the organic conversation, but just adding in another question here. Um, and I think this one's semi briefer than the last one. Um, but what is, or not briefer, I should say, it's briefer. not that big of an answer, but, uh, what is discipleship? I, I was, I personally thought of when I wrote this question of just like the word that Emma received. Um, mm. but I mean, also like, uh, yeah. <clears throat> you know, let's not go too far into it, but like, what, what do you, what would one of you guys yeah. just say what you think? Well, I mean, what does disciple mean? To me, disciple means, you know, discipling somebody is to teach somebody how to walk out their faith in mm-hmm. this world. Yeah. So Well, that's discipleship. Disciple discipleship. would be someone that right. is, walking is walking for Christ. Correct. Yeah. Well, and we had prayed because we wanted to know, Lord, are we are we doing this right? Is this pleasing to you how we're discipling people and and uh, how do and how do we do this? How do you want us to do it? And he actually gave Emma a word, and he said that it's it's teaching people how to behave. And I thought, oh, that's so good, you know, because disciple, like, just, that's like a big word. So, but if we t- everybody knows what it means to behave. If you've ever raised children, mm-hmm. you better behave. Behave mm-hmm. means how do I how do I walk this out? How do I live this out? And He's really placed on my heart a lot about uh, Romans 12, about being a living sacrifice. And yeah. people need to understand that this isn't about a quick fix. This isn't about a quick prayer. This is about um, putting your life on the altar burning as a it all. sacrifice, burning it up. And he goes on uh, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, which is your spiritual worship. And then... Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good and perfect, pleasing will. So there's a whole part of renewing. When someone's been born again, that's the beginning stages, the very foundational beginning stages of a walk with Christ. And they, most people, depending on where they've come from, there's a lot of renewing the mind, yeah. rethinking, making your mind new, looking mm-hmm. at life in a new way. Because we're habit forming and we get into habits. Well, I think uh, Emma's putting her finger up. Sorry, I was just going to say, you know, too, it's, it's really good, you know, that what we're talking about saying, like, you know, you need to, it's a whole different life pretty much. And you have, like Taylor asked, what did we change? And it's pretty yeah, much everything. everything. If you look back on our old life, you know, what did we change? But yes, <laughs> <laughs> but I think, you know, something that we kind of always say to people when we are like discipling them or whatever, it's a gradual change. You know, it's not like this thing you need to be scared of. Like, wait, what? I need to change everything. Like I need to like literally take everything away from my life, you know? 
it's a gradual change. The Holy Spirit is very gentle, and God is a loving God too, you know. And and so um, he's it doesn't gonna, happen overnight. Yeah, he's gonna give a gradual. Um, yeah, I can't think of the word, but you know what I mean. He's gonna remind nice. your mind of different things that you need to take out of your life one by one it's not just going to be like a poof and and you're different and i was going to say that's why like i mean don't get me wrong discipleship programs are great but and we'll touch on this later so i don't want to go too far into this but just to give a sneak peek i guess like discipleship a lot of the ways like how we utilize it again when it is like teaching them how to walk and 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 all that stuff it really looks different every night every person because it's a different scenario you know you know like a discipleship program is great like a broad program but in general most people need something different every single day and like emma said you might think of something like a year later that's like oh i wasn't super clear on this you know i think one of the um other things is that we've learned is that you might get lost um in the churches or in the bigger organizations is discipling people most of the time needs to be a one-on-one or our family with one person um because like we all know uh two two groups basic like or families and a group yeah because as we all know when we get into bigger groups sometimes we don't want to share we get embarrassed what i might tell one person i wouldn't so if you're if somebody you're discipling can't be completely open and and um share then you know you're not going to be able to do be good at discipling them. So right. one-on-one or our family with one person or a, we, we do uh, married couples and things like that, it's really, it ends up being really more impactful. Yeah. No, I, I, totally. I, exactly. Um, so with all of this, before we get more in-depth to like the process and all that stuff, because I'm sure like, not a lot of you, but I'm sure there's some of you out there that um, – do want to take this step and and do want to lo- know what discipleship looks like um, because you know I know for me personally like bringing people to church it never gave the results that I wanted and that sounds prideful but obviously the result I wanted was like someone to have salvation you know but it was like I was constantly like worried about it and thinking about it but it was like I was completely not in control because it's the pastor and the system but like being able to actually be a part in the discipleship program is you see not program the discipleship process you see so much more fruit and like you're actually able to help people but i think a lot of people are just scared on you know how that works but so the first thing is you know what are the key steps to becoming a disciple i've talked about this but uh, i think we can should talk about that and then also the next thing that i think we can kind of just bunch together is what we've learned along the way with repentance baptism deliverance holy spirit so i know that's kind of answering the first question but again Let's talk about the key steps and just kind of talk about what we've learned from like, you know, when we first started, we were gung ho and all this stuff and, and kind of what we've learned. And maybe mom, if you want to just start us off uh, on the steps. Yeah. I mean, you don't have, you don't have to go super in depth, just more briefer. When somebody comes to us and just as a side, it's been amazing because we literally haven't gone out to um, get people, God is bringing people to us, and it's amazing. I mean, literally. Oh, and we, we prayed that, too. Yes, you know? we prayed, and God mm. has brought people to our door. Um, and as they receive help, they go share it with their family and friends. But So if someone comes to us, um, you know, this it might take a few days, or it could be, depending on where the person is. Um, but the first thing we talk about is surrender, repentance, really what the meaning of repentance is that you are repenting towards god you're not sorry for the things that you did that hurt somebody else i mean yes you are but that's not repentance it's not like regret oh i wish i hadn't done that to my life no i am repentant to you father because i have sinned against my creator so that takes some time for people to understand what true repentance is it's not just confessing your sin but it is actually turning your life away from what you were doing that wasn't pleasing to god and running towards him um and yeah and i think we've actually found um a lot of strength and freedom in the um what's the word speaking it out well, yeah. uh, what did you Confession? call it Conf- Confession. confessing it yes but yeah like at the bottom and exactly. i know we've talked about this like yeah. repentance is Cute. um your heart for one and it's an action 
um, of like doing more so than like speaking it. But what we like to do, just piling off what you were saying, mom, is um, let's say let's say we're let, let's just take for example someone who is new to the faith and, and wants to be born again and wants to start this walk with Christ. Well, we know that the key things to becoming a disciple, and we've already talked about this, are repentance, baptism, and filling with the Holy Spirit. Yes, obviously belief is in there, but to me, if you're going to go forward with those three steps, you obviously believe. I mean, that just seems kind of obvious. So belief is, that is belief. It's, you know, because remember on Pentecost when they said, what do we do? They were cut to the heart. He said, repent, be baptized, be filled with the Holy Spirit. They already believed. You're not going to, you know, be looking for an answer or looking for an answer in Christ, I should say, unless you actually believe, you know? So again, with repentance starting there, um, we'll tell them, like my mom said, like, think about what you need to repent about and, you know, talk to God with that. But also remember, it's not just, okay, God, I'm sorry about this. It's like living it out. So if I say, God, like, I'm sorry for being an alcoholic. It's like, I am committed to not being an alcoholic anymore. Will some people... A stumble, yes, but we'll talk about also the freedom that they receive. Um, but yeah, I just want to say that. But with confession, we usually let's say it's a guy. Me and my dad will go in the other room, and vice versa for girls with Emma and my mom. We'll go in the other room and we'll um, have them talk through their repentance because I think two key things, and I'd love to hear you guys' opinion on this. I just kind of want to lay the groundwork of like for one when someone confesses there's freedom for themselves because we all know that our words have power and, and we've talked about that as well on this podcast but um you know even god spoke the the world into being so there's there's power in our words and just letting things go like there's freedom from demons and then there's literally just freedom from yourself of just being able to speak it out but also with confession uh, I think it's really strong because the devil's one of his number one tactics is shame. But if you if you can speak it out to someone, um, even though you might not be ready to share it with the whole world, you all of a sudden feel so much uh, less bound by shame. And this starts the beginning of the freedom, which we'll talk about um, a little bit more later. But Well, and just to tag in there that we found that the thing that the person... Um, maybe there's a lot of things that they have no problem speaking about confessing, but oftentimes there's one deep, dark secret, mm -hmm. and the devil loves that. If yeah. he can keep that hidden and in the dark, then that person can't get free from it. It has well, to be exposed. Just because, I mean, light. let's say you have 100 chains and you undo 99 of them. You're still yeah. chained to something. So you either have to get it all out or... And that's the, the toughest part about, if I think, discipleship and, and helping sure. people is that, like, you want to help them so bad and you see their heart. But, like, if they don't have the power to let it out and let it let go of it themselves, it can be extremely hard for them to receive freedom. And that's why I think it's good for us right now to just be talking about discipleship because it, it is a very – there is no written out, like, this is what – like, with some people, it's been really hard. And months later, they realize, oh – I was abused or whatever as a child. And that can be the key to like the shame that still is the last chain the devil has on them. Mm -hmm. But if they can't let that out or speak that out, then it can be really hard for them to get freedom. That's the really sad thing as you get deeper and deeper about sin. Yeah. But And sometimes repentance, you know, re there should be fruit in keeping with that repentance. In other words, there should be, you should be able to tell that the person has repented. So, some people come and they realize, well, I have a lot of unforgiveness. I think I need to still take another week and and really think about that and pray about that and maybe even count the cost. Count the cost. Step out. Ask <laughs> yeah. that person for forgiveness because um, yeah, there's some deep stuff that people have to really deal with. So if the person comes to us and they've already kind of been through all that in their mind, maybe they're ready. But for most people, they they probably need a little time to think through that. It's funny, and so I don't mean to. Yeah, hog this with me and mom but um just you can really tell when someone is really repentant yeah. it's weird mm -hmm. that you can but it seems to be just a holy spirit thing because sometimes me and my dad will look at each other or emma and mom and be like wow they're like they're ready total and it's like sur total surrender it's they've already surrendered it. Yeah. yeah and you can sense their joy and like excitement and mm -hmm. they just you know when we you always say and, and maybe we could talk about this right now it's like if you're not desperate we won't baptize you and maybe dad you well, want oh go ahead no, yeah, you were going to ask him about the story. Well, no, I was actually just going to ask uh, you, uh, just talk about a little bit about at the beginning, our excitement for baptism, and now mm. maybe was, you could even touch on Luke 11 where it talks about 
demons casting out and all that stuff. I was just going to say, though, that, Dad, you should talk about the story of our neighbor and how mm. he was super repentant. And then at the last moment, I don't know if you could just yeah. maybe give, because that was exactly what you were saying. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I do want to say about baptism, I'm, I'm, I, I think it gets pushed away and, and people say, you know, everybody wants to go straight to water baptism. Water baptism, that's not what that means. Um, I do know that Jesus said, you must be born again of water and of spirit. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I'm, it's what we've experienced and what concerns me is that it gets pushed away. And um, that baptism that washes away your sins, you know, buries that old man. You, you're dying to Christ and rising a new creation, and that does something for your conscience. It, you know now, I have started over. All those past sins, those things, I've left them in the water. It's gone. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and at first, when we started this journey, uh, it was about baptism. We wanted to make sure people got in the water and baptized them. Um, so it was important uh, to get people baptized, get them in the water, but... What we've come to realize that people think that, okay, all I have to do is get baptized, those sins are washed away, then I can go on moving into my life. It's a fix. Yeah, they were looking for a quick fix, which that's not what it is. Well, I think. And it's a process along the way, yes, dude. I think even unintentionally, when you're so excited about a new journey, like I was actually just talking to a friend on the phone literally yesterday, because I like to say yesterday, referring to, you know, weeks back, but it was literally the day before today we were talking and I was just saying um it's always weird when you reference you saying something because it sounds prideful but I just felt like oh I made a breakthrough in my mind that like um the Pentecostal movement it's like they get so stoked on something of the Holy Spirit that they learn that they go a little too gung-ho before they fully understand it and then all of a sudden you're not discerning the spirit Mm -hmm. people are rolling around on the ground And now half of people don't want that. So then you have the other side who are the super conservative, but they're overly conservative. It is good to have order. It is good to have certain things that they have, but they're too conservative. (laughs) So what we find, though, is relating that back to baptism is when we realize the power that baptism has and deliverance, casting out demons and like people can actually be free. Like like I've explained on this show before, like we've seen freedom from Basically everything you could think of. I mean, I don't think we've had someone that has cancer yet. That would be really cool. But well, God can do anything. It doesn't matter how big. It, that is true. We did. It doesn't matter how we bigger did. or small. But what I was going to say is you get gung ho in the beginning. because It's like, oh, my gosh, there's power in this. And I see that with the Pentecostal movement and that sometimes their intentions are really good. But before they really think about it, study it, they just do it. And unintentionally, we almost make it about the numbers in our mind. Like, literally, we never thought it was about the numbers, but I do think sometimes baptizing people and getting to say, wow, we got, got to baptize this many people, this many people, um, it can feel very uh, affirming and fulfilling. Like, I'm doing what God wants me to do because I've done, I've done 23 baptisms in a year. But what we realized is like our first maybe 20 baptisms, most of the people didn't come back. And again, this happens when you're new and you're excited, but... Um, you start to realize that, wow, you, and going back to what I was saying, you really have to be desperate because if you're not desperate, um, like you said, dad, it's just a quick fix. They just, they just want to, you know, get their old sins washed away or whatever. Um, so I think that's when the key comes in of like, when you are dealing with things of power, such as the Holy Spirit and demons and baptism, which has a lot of power, you have to combine it with a really good understanding of scripture. And I know you want to say something, mom, but just before that, we started to realize so, for instance, when we baptize someone, we always cast demons out right after because um, although there's not, like I said in the book of Acts, there's not this perfect way of doing it. It seems like, well, if someone's already getting freedom from their sins and all this stuff, it's kind of the perfect time to like make sure all those demons are gone. Um, but it says in Luke 11, when an evil spirit leaves a person, it goes into the desert searching for rest. But when it finds none, it says... I will return to the person I came from. So it returns and finds that its former home home is all swept and in order. That's someone's, you know, insides, right? Then the spirit finds seven other spirits more evil than itself, and they all enter the person and live there so that the person is worse off than before. And that's key, worse off than before. So now we've kind of realized that we don't want to baptize someone or like if we're going through their repentance and we see, hmm, no, they're they're still holding on to unforgiveness or something. We don't want to baptize you, not because... We don't want you to be like to start this journey with Christ, but 
it's all going to be for nothing and it's also going to hurt you. It says the person will be worse off than before because seven more demons will come in because if you're not sold out and you still have open doors as we'd like to call it, and I know I'm saying a lot here, but it's worse off. And I think that's why we've learned that we got to like chill with the baptisms and make sure that people really, really want it because you know, when you get to heaven, is God going to say, how many disciples did you make? Or is it going to be how good and quality um, were the were the disciples? You know what I mean? Like, And how much fruit? And that's How much fruit did the disciples It's not just that? about how many baptisms, because if they're not showing any fruit, or like Jennifer said, they're, they're um, fruit and making, not keeping oh, fruit with repentance. Not keep, yeah. Yeah. Because, I mean, and, and that is a huge game changer because we don't want to go out we're not called to go out and just baptize people yeah yeah he calls us out to to um we should actually just quote it strict straight from the bible so it doesn't Mark get baptizing them yes. and teaching them and teaching them to obey right. all my commands all so them. if you're baptizing them and, and cast out demons but then you're not just letting them go free mm-hmm. which you, we, we have no control of that. These people have to, under their own free will, we have free will, want it. That's what I think Taylor is also trying to say is, you know, if you're desperate, you're going to come back. You're going to want to be taught how to walk this walk. So then if you're baptized and then you're supposed to teach them to obey my commands, well, there we go. We're going to show you this now. This is the road to right. continue Baptism on. is going to fix some problems, but it's going to introduce a ton more, but the the problems that you want because you're following Christ, but that's that's the key. If you if you're just in it to think it's going to make your life perfect, that's not it. It should be always, and I think you guys know this, but just to remind all of us, like it should always be our heart just desires to serve the one true God. And if these are the steps, if this is how hard the life has to be, so be it. Because why wouldn't I want to serve the God who can, you know, bring wrath upon? What does it say? You know, a God that can. A curse and bless and you know is very powerful like why wouldn't i want to serve that god yeah uh, i just lost my train of thought but i think what i was going to say was in the beginning i thought my thinking like you were saying was well if they if they repent if they're baptized if we cast out the demons if they're filled with the holy spirit i mean there's no way they're not gonna like they're good to go they're gonna live out this life they're gonna walk it out they'll have the tools they'll right? have all the tools and Man, I saw a lot of people just right away fall back and never hear from them again. And it just made us realize that you have to count the cost. And um, we have to be really thorough with that. Now, I mean, again, like we are given a choice. We are, God created us with choice. And even the person that is the most repentant and has all and goes through the process, they can still choose to turn away. Mm-hmm. And we're not in control of that. But, but we do our best to be discerning and be wise before we... Um, take someone through these steps to just make sure they're ready and they understand. And what does that mean to be ready? I mean, who's your number one? I mean, what is your number one? We all, I mean, I think everybody out there can relate. What is my number one thing in life? What is, who is my number one thing in life? And he, Jesus is supposed to be our Lord. If somebody's lording over you, that's your one, that's your main concern. That's your number one. Mm-hmm. And when he's your number one, then those things come very easily. And you won't open those doors because everything is funneled through him as a relationship does. And you have the Holy Spirit. Well, exactly. Prompting yeah. you if you're going to listen to him. Yeah. Yeah. So um, just these are all great thoughts. And, and um, just to like put it in a nice little bow again, like just because I, I, I want to have organic conversation about all these things, but also have like a broader storyline going on. So again, let's just take it back to, so we meet a person, right? They repent, their repentance is true. Mm -hmm. We go through a repentance talk. And I mean, me and my dad have been involved in ones that were two hours long because there's a lot to talk about. We want to cover all the bases. I think that's where the church gets a little carried away is um, uh, the church gets a little carried away because um they wanted to speed up the process almost. So it's like, well, if we can make a disciple in 30 seconds, just say this prayer, boom. And again, that's more numbers focus. And I, again, I was talking to my friend on the phone the other day. I'm like, man, if we really sit ourselves back and think, okay, although yes, it may take three or four hours to like fully baptize someone, fully cast out all the demons, fill them up with the Holy Spirit, run through repentance. Or longer. Isn't that worth, <laughs> isn't that worth, yeah, exactly. 
Isn't that worth it though? That that's the key, one of the biggest keys to their salvation. That'll get them started. I mean, I get like efficiency and all this stuff, but we want to make it this quick process. Like, man, if it takes longer than 30 seconds, something's wrong, but it's like, man, no. And yeah, it is hard. Some nights there's people over and I'm like, I want to go to bed, but it's like, it's literally four hours of my whole life to help this person start their literal eternity with Christ. Um, but anyways, so again, just going back to the narrative here, it's like you meet someone, right? We go through repentance talk. And then if we feel like they're ready with the Holy Spirit, obviously we're not just like, nope, you're not, or you're, you, you are, um, we'll get them in the water and we'll baptize them. And what that normally consists of, and I'll just summarize it just cause it's kind of quick. Just, I want to say this just in case you guys are actually looking for a real application of like, I've never baptized someone. What do I say? Uh, what we do is, um, and it's not in, in the words besides Jesus name, but we'll ask them, you know, uh, are you ready to be baptized on your own faith, you know, to Jesus Christ? And they'll reply. Yes. Hopefully if not, maybe they should get out. (laughs) Um, uh, but, and then what we do is we dunk them in and it's full submersion. I know it sounds a little like, okay, come on. And obviously if the world was ending and all you had was a shower, yes, by all means, you know, do your best. But since we have a jacuzzi, you know, and we all have the ocean or a lake, um, you put them all the way in the water because that's what baptism means. It's full submersion. And again, it sounds a little technical, but I think the church got off when we started cutting corners that we felt like, yeah, that's a little too technical. And now look where we are. So I would rather be technical and just cover the basis, you know, but anyway, just if I can add, yeah, go for it. Baptism in the Greek is baptismo and it's plunging a solid into a liquid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So well, if you drop a rock into a liquid, it goes all the way to the bottom. Exactly. So we go all the way down. And I think it's symbolically important too, because if you're burying the whole old man, you don't want half of them out of the water. It's, it's, it's weird, but it, it, it does make a lot of sense. And for you that are still listening to this and struggling to think even that like baptism has power, I know all this sounds like, okay, come on, dude. Like what's, what's the difference? But trust me, we've seen demons manifest before they get even get in the tub. And if you are confused at all, I would really recommend you watch uh, episode one of this podcast um, because I... I don't want to re-talk about everything here, but it really does help break down baptism and all the verses that support it. But anyways, uh, once we ask them that, we'll dunk them in the the water. And what we say is die with Christ as we put them in the water and then rise with Christ as we pull them up. According to Romans 6. According to Romans 6, exactly. It says we we died with Christ in our baptism. And, you know, for those of you who are saying, well, no, it says to be baptized in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. um, That was actually added in um, after... Uh, that was actually added in by the Catholic Church. Um, so do some research on that because everywhere else in Acts, it says in Jesus' name. And obviously, yes, in fact, I was actually the only one at this table. Well, we, they've all been rebaptized, but I was baptized into that. Again, we shouldn't get too much into legalism, but if it's on you and you're the one baptizing them, you need to do it in Jesus' name because Jesus is the one that paid the price for sins, right? So we baptize in Jesus' name, what for the remission of sins, as it says all throughout the Bible. So anyways, we're, we're about here at the, at the yeah. process. So let's talk about the what next process, sense. which is we pull them out of the water. And because we have neighbors and little kids and all this stuff, lately we've been just taking them inside to do the deliverance. But you don't want to wait six years or, you know, a day to do the deliverance. It needs to happen after the baptism because it's powerful. And think about it, if you're dying to your old man you want to kill it all that day you don't want to go home and then fall into sin because you still have demons now it's like well you just got born again but now you're now you're back to sinning you know this is your one chance to like new slate clean slate so we take them inside and then someone else uh, did you mention that we baptize them outside because of the jacuzzi (laughs) yeah we have a jacuzzi outside so we'll baptize them outside and then we'll dry them off quickly and then it's business mode we go full back in they dry off or whatever put on new clothes sit him in a seat, yeah. and then we start praying to cast out demons. And Emma, do you want to talk a little bit about it? Sorry. I just have to say that <clears throat> um, there's someone out there right now who has a torn meniscus in their left knee, mm-hmm. and um, God is healing you right now. Whoa. Right now he's healing you. That's and sick. he's also saying, Praise thank you, Lord. Jesus. He's also <laughs> saying, um, have faith in me. Mm. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. (laughs) Praise God. That was sick. Well, thanks for 
feel free to yeah, jump awesome. in uh, earlier if you if you need yeah. to. Um, <laughs> yeah, thank awesome. thank you, Emma, for that. Yeah, and sorry to interrupt. <laughs> if you haven't checked out uh, episode three, check it out. Emma does some more, um, not does, but has <laughs> gotten some words weird. in that episode as well. And there's still one that, to my knowledge, hasn't been heard yet by the person. So. Especially if your last name is Johnson, go check that out. And if it is, email me. Um, but anyways, uh, maybe mom, you want to talk about just because I think my mom's specialty is everything, but uh, no. mainly the deliverance. She, I mean, we all can do it and yeah. it's all Jesus's name, but she's read a lot of books and learned a lot. So maybe just well, touch on that. And it's not even that. I think God had a plan for me because the first person that God put in my my road after I had studied about deliverance and watched a zillion people uh, delivered, um, a friend that I was trying to help that was really struggling with a lot of demonic activity. And this was in the beginning and I basically did it the wrong way. <laughs> Just, I mean, th we wouldn't do it this way now, but um, she started manifesting demons. And so I had no other choice but to literally you just go for it and I had seen so much that on video that I knew what to say what to do and I knew it was the power of Jesus name the authority of his name and so this went on for probably two hours with this person it was pretty crazy and I was just blown away by what God did and um, I knew wow I think he's gonna use me <laughs> in this way so um, well, you go from never casting out a demon to like yeah 45 minutes or an hour of this lady's like screaming seeing all this stuff two graphically hours. Yes. two hours yeah so it's, I mean yeah it was pretty baptism by fire at its highest <laughs> <rank>. that's exactly <laughs> what it was and it, and it showed me the power mm. the power is in Jesus name and Jesus name literally means rescuer deliverer and it is in the it is in the power of his name that these demons have to flee. And so, when a person after they're baptized, um, they're they've been washed, they've been buried. So now is a perfect time. And if, like Taylor said, it's not set out clearly like that in Acts, but it is a is a great time to then lay hands on this person and. And through their repentance, we get clues as to what has gotten in and what is um, controlling or what has demonized. That's the that's the reason, I, I forgot to mention, the third reason why we have them speak it out to someone. Because if you don't, and I'll let you go back, I yeah, just wanted to, no. you know, if we don't know what they're dealing with, how can I, like, command a spirit of lust to go? Like, right. I'm aimlessly guessing. And don't get me wrong, sometimes that works, but also... And not that I know demons back and forth, but I know that demons can also pick up on like almost our insecurities of like, mm -hmm. oh, spirit of lust, go, okay, nothing happened. But it's like, if I know this person is like deep into pornography or something like that, yeah. then like I know to go out of spirit of lust until I see it leave. Because at this point doing yeah. like what, 50 or 60 deliverances, not to flash the title, but just that much of like trial and error is like, we know that if you've dealt this much in this or that, Something is going to, to come out that has to do with that, and we're going to go out of faith and keep pushing until that thing manifests. Well, and I think about, I, you know, I taught school for a few years. If I tell the whole classroom, hey, come on, everybody, be quiet, be quiet. I'm probably not going to get much, but if I say, Johnny, you, be quiet, yeah. you know, he's going to perk up and go, oh, whoa, she sees me. She sees me. I better behave. So there is something about knowing. Is the person struggling with anxiety, um, sexual sins, um, unforgiveness? I mean, there's a myriad of things. And some things we don't even really know what spirit to call it, but we just, you know, use whatever God gives us. And, um, Dad, how do spirits come in? Um, open doors. And open doors are sin. I mean, consciously living in sin that gives them legal access and legal right to to come in um it's like a court system um even like because i think you know people who have been in like new age or stuff so, and stuff they wouldn't think that they're necessarily sinning but i mean it is we know that it is a sin but it could be unconsciously sinning for them you know but it's still it's doing something that isn't right with God. Yeah, and I think that's a whole nother podcast. Yeah. Um, but I, but yeah, God, I was going to say, I have talked about, check out, are you free? Yeah. <laughs> that's a good one God, God uh, from, from creation, gave us the ability to know right from wrong. 
Mm-hmm. So, um, and they can come in generationally, right? Generationally, yep. Curses. And also legally, be with that generational mm-hmm. curse yeah, yeah. from from years this, ago when they've opened doors. And this all sounds crazy, and I know I can't even remember what I've talked about in the Are You Free episode. But if you really <laughs> do want to know more, I would suggest checking that out. But also, just check out your Bible. You know, see what it says. But or uh, or check it out on YouTube or whatever. You know. Yeah. Um, Sorry. Or you can email you as well. Yeah, email me. Um, yeah, literally if you want to know more because I think this is a taboo and it's like, oh, well, if you're in Africa, of course there's demons. But if you're in America, no, there's no demons. Come on. Mm. What do you think? They don't They don't, They don't. don't go cross-continental? I mean, well, gosh. I think the, the, those other countries understand it because they – it's a pre, it's prevalent there. Mm-hmm. And that's, you know? that's and, why – go, sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to say they're, they're – when, when you see um, – uh, Christians going in there casting out demons they know it's real they've yeah. seen it they've experienced it where here we just want to call it depression we're going to call it mental illness or you know addiction or you know once we label it and put a name on it and say we need a prescription for OCD, it mm-hmm. anxiety I, yeah I was just going to say too along with discipleship I think not to be like oh you guys need me or whatever but you know, it is good to have someone who is prophetic or sees in the spirit. Very important. Because game changer. It's very helpful. Yeah. It's like huge. I mean, even if I wasn't working in those gifts, like we would need someone. Like yeah. you yes. just because it can help, um <laughs> you know, because sometimes it does get okay, I'm calling out all these things they told me, but it's still not leaving. Right. And God can tell us or other people, you know, like, oh, you got to go back on this again. It's this, or, it's this, it's yeah. this. And I was going to say that, like, that's the thing. Like, you look at the Bible, and yeah, it's like, okay, command it to go in Jesus' name. Okay, you learn that from Acts. And from someone who's never done it, you're like, this is this is great help. This is, like, sick. Like, oh, my gosh, I've never tried this. But a few months into doing it, you start realizing, okay, you got to try a lot of different things because – and we don't know why. I'm, I'm like – I know it's it's scary to talk about things that aren't in the Bible, but we're experiencing certain things. It's like, yeah, we don't see them necessarily like talk like trying to cast out a demon for this long or or going into this person's past. But also remember, things are a lot different even now. Of just like, you know, Jesus said that things would get even worse. So the sins that people are involved in now are even well, crazier generation than and generation and generation and, generation and i was going to say about generational curses cuz dad just reminded me of like if you guys don't think generational curses are real first check out that episode but two um sorry not to plug that episode a lot but i've done the work so just check it out um but you look at adam and eve we're under a generational curse from them if you don't if you want to look at it in the most broad sense right if we weren't then after their after their um they died off or whatever, Adam and Eve, none of us would be cursed to, what does it say, work the land, have pain in childbirth, mm. have sin in the world. That is all a, that's all a curse. generational curse. And also it talks about in the Bible that, um, you know, did this man sin or his parents? Obviously, Jesus says neither one in that case. But them asking that question means that it was obviously a thing and they knew it was a thing at that time. And the biggest thing is like, you know, take our experience with a grain of salt, but in all we've seen, generational curses are a thing. You know, people say, drinking runs in my family. And it's like, why is that so accepted? But if I say there's a generational curse, you're like, no, no. But I've heard people literally say, well, yeah, my dad was a drinker, so of course I'm a drinker. I'm like, well, yeah, that's that's generational. And maybe you don't like the word curse. I'm sorry if I offended you. Jesus is offensive. But, um, you know, if you are if you struggle with something and you've seen it passed down your whole um, life, even like cancer you know oh cancer runs in my family that's that's not normal that's something that is if we recognize that all of our problems come from sin right then we can first see why god doesn't want us to sin why he speaks so strongly about it because he knows demons come in and that disconnects us from god we see that in adam and eve and two things like curses and things like disease and all these things come and we can only find the freedom through jesus you know um anyways Maybe yeah. someone could put a, just a cherry on the top of, of deliverance. Maybe just talk, touch more about like how deep sometimes you really do have to go. And one thing I want you guys to touch on that I think is important is don't give up and how we've gave up in the past. Yes. I mean, there have been times. Not gave up, but like yeah. been like, well, maybe there's nothing, you know. They hide. Yeah. Demons yeah, hide. Demons hide. <laughs> and they will try. You know, they don't want to go out. Some of these demons have been in these people's lives since um, their whole life. And they can be 
hiding and they can be really strong. And um, even with uh, Emma's prophetic gifts, sometimes we don't get a clear understanding and the person leaves and we're like, oh, I wonder, mm, and then we'll continue to pray and ask the Lord. And, um, and it can be a process. It can be several nights of them. Um, maybe the Holy Spirit brings something else to them and they repent and we continue to deliver. It can be a lot or it can be a one-time thing. So every person is different and that keeps mm-hmm. us not doing a program, but um, having to truly like listen to the Holy Spirit and follow his leading. And um, some people are very afraid. Some people are like, yes, get this out of me. Um, we have all different in- uh, experiences. But when a person has finally gotten set free, there is typically a real sense of relief and They'll release. Know, and I there's think. peace. Mm-hmm. They feel we've... light. Yeah. They feel light and clean. And that's the key. Like, if you guys have never tried to deliver someone, first, what you're going to do is, you know, in the name of Jesus, name the spirit. So let's say spirit of lust, come out of this person or, you know, the name or her or him right now. You make sure you say right now in the name of Jesus, you know, there's a lot more language that you will learn as you go. But that's the that's the key thing in Jesus name. The demons must obey if the person is repentant and actually willing to let it go. Because remember, if the demon's not going, don't think, oh, this is my fault. The person has to allow that demon to go because they've allowed it to come in. And I know you're saying no one's really invited a demon before, but basically you have to understand it's like this. I know people want to say again that I've never invited a demon in, but whenever you sin, you can just look at sin as a straight direct invitation that, you know, the devil will always RSVP on, um, to your soul, right? So whenever you sin, separates us from God. Exactly. And I'm not saying you get a demon every time you sin. I'm just saying continuation of sin. Um, and we don't know how long it takes or whatever, but it's kind of good because we need to be less thinking, Oh, what's the least we can do? And more being like, I need to run away from sin. But just think of it as that way. When you are living in sin, it's literally an invitation to the devil, um, to send a demon to come inside of you. So if you're thinking, I've never invited someone, well, sin, sin does that. But anyways, what I was going to say is, You command it to go and you battle for this person's soul. Um, But I do want to speak on most of the time we will see a manifestation. If you're not clear with what that term means, because it's kind of an older term, it means something that you see a change in them. You know, um, some people will cough. uh, Some people will scream. uh, Some people will yawn. Some people will literally just take a deep breath or cry. But these are all releases and you can feel it. A key other thing is you need to ask them, how are they doing? When you're delivering someone, it's aggressive. You're not just going to say, okay, spirit of lust, go. No, in the name of Jesus, spirit of lust, you come out right now in the name of Jesus. Authority. Uh, with authority. But, you know, you don't want to feel like you're yelling at this person, so you ask the person. We often do this. Hey, how are you feeling? Do you feel anything? And literally 99% of the time they'll say, I feel a battle in my stomach. I feel something moving down here. Place your hand there and command it to go. I know that this sounds very broad and hard, but... That's how it is. It's kind of like playing a game of Clue. You're constantly taking the clues and you're learning. And uh, it's and like you can do it yourself. It, it, you can you can if cast demons out of demon yourself. Of yourself. Yeah. And I was gonna say w- one more thing. Um, sorry, this is long winded, but don't give up. That's the other key. And I was just talking to my friend on the phone again um, about not giving up because often we look for a certain manifestation, and sometimes you're not gonna see that, and then you're gonna think. Maybe they don't have a demon, but but they were involved with witchcraft and all this stuff. Go with your gut, and by your gut, I mean the Holy Spirit um, in most cases. If you feel like, no, this person should definitely have a demon with all that they've struggled with or some sort of spirit, then stick with that um, and go at it. And again, I was praying for deliverance with someone um, the other day, and I couldn't be with them, so it was over the phone. And... I didn't see the manifestation that I was expecting, like a cough or emotion or like crying or something like this. Um, So I just kept going at it just to make sure, you know, I covered all my, uh, my, my, um, bases. Sorry, they're asking for a pen. Um, (laughs) Cover all my bases. But the cool thing is, is the next day I checked in with this person and this person said, I feel freedom. Oh my gosh. Look at all these crazy things happening. So, Um, that is the key to the ways you can know a demon is coming out. Either you see the manifestation, coughing and all this stuff. And I would, if I was you go for a long time until you see those things in most cases, 
but there are certain cases like the one I faced yesterday, which I would say is 5% of the time or 10% of the time where you check in with the person and they feel released later. Or even this person over the phone told me, I feel peace. Like I, I didn't feel peace while you're praying. Now I all of a sudden finally feel peace. That's an amazing sign as well. But um, remember, we've talked about fruit. And if you don't know what that term means, basically something showing like a tree, if it's healthy, it will bear a lot of ripe fruit. So with the same thing, if this person is really delivered, they'll bear fruit with keeping with that, which means they'll feel freedom from sin. So if I'm casting a spirit of lust out of this person, this person the next day should say something like, oh my gosh, I was in the same scenario where I'm usually tempted and I fall into lust and pornography and all this stuff and I didn't fall into it. And you guys know I've shared my testimony with when I knew that spirit left me, how I felt freedom from that. That is the key and you should you should see it. And same with me, like I don't know when the spirit left, but I know that God took care of it because I see... Um, the tangible evidence you know so again i know that's a lot to throw at you and maybe uh listen through what we just said about deliverance because it can be a very it's probably something in the bible that's least spoken about um we just know that it's in jesus name um because really to speak about it you'd have to write a book just as long as about the bible because everyone every spirit is different because they have personalities um and we've talked about that in the demons video um And yeah, sorry, I'm going on a little uh, long, but just know, don't give up and just know it's all in the name of Jesus. And um, most likely if you feel, hmm, this person, there's something spiritual because that's not normal or, you know, they're addicted. Addiction, that's a basic big flashing red light that mm, there's probably something spiritual there and and, uh, pray that, you know. Anyway, sorry, I know that's a lot, but does anyone want to add anything to that? That's... Good. We concur. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Good job. So um, maybe, Emma, you want to talk about this um, last step here, and then we'll move on to another question. Uh, Holy Spirit. So when someone is completely free, and maybe talk about how we know they're free, and mm-hmm. um, in that moment, you can literally just you know tell a story of maybe someone that you've experienced with. like how they receive the holy spirit kind yeah of. and yeah. what that what that looks like if you're yeah. if you were trying to tell someone you know mm. here's how you pray for someone to receive the holy spirit yeah well like we said before you know the person can usually tell if they are free or not and yeah i mean maybe they're not like i know for sure but like they'll be like oh wow i feel a lot of peace or okay, like, I feel like that battle that I maybe felt inside of me is gone. Like, I feel fine And sometimes it's a physical feeling in their stomach and it starts to move. And and don't get me wrong, we've seen people that have manifested, and we're not just talking with their mouth, their whole body, like, throwing their arms up, shaking, uh, falling down on the ground. So with those, it's pretty obvious when it's done because all of a sudden they let out this large... And their body, <sighs> their and body their, goes limp. Their body literally like loses all of its uh, power almost. It's just like, oh my gosh. Um, so again, I'm sorry, but it is very different with a lot of people. So it's really yeah. trial, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Going um, and so then after that, and maybe we ask them like, you know, how are you feeling? Good, whatever. Then we'll say, okay, like, let's fill you up with the Holy Spirit because you're going to feel so amazing. And I remember the first time when I actually received the Holy Spirit my mom, we just like, she just held my hands and she was like, are you ready to receive the Holy Spirit? And I was like, yes. And she's like, okay, like, she pretty much what we say is like, Holy Spirit, just come upon them right now in Jesus name, like fill up their body from the bottoms of their feet to the tops of their head and just overflow out of them, um, out of their mouth. And um, yeah, just fill them up with the Holy Spirit. And we kind of keep praying that maybe we'll, um, yeah, just keep saying, like, Holy Spirit, come. And then what we've really learned is if if I was a person praying for someone, I would start to speak in tongues so they could, I don't love the word imitate, but, you know, that's how a baby first starts to learn a language by imitating the person who they're getting taught from. So we'll start speaking in tongues. They can start to kind of imitate our syllables. They feel empowered to, like... Yeah. speak it out instead yeah. of just being like okay open like, your mouth and, and try something to do yeah. yeah well how do i speak it's, it i don't know what it's really saying. just an act but, of faith yeah it is an act of faith and every single time someone starts to imitate we've seen at least 
they will start speaking and they can't imitate our tongues because everyone has a different tongue. So Mm -hmm. you physically cannot imitate someone else's tongue. Maybe you can like the first syllable, but then it starts to become your own. And you can notice, you're like, oh, they have it. You'll be able to notice because you know your own tongue and you we've heard other people's tongues but yeah. and, and remember we've, and we've heard demonic tongues so yeah. we know the difference right and and remember what and check out my holy spirit episode because i don't i don't want to get too much on a tangent but just remember um with the holy spirit that we see in the bible that the evidence of the holy spirit in a lot of ways was speaking in tongues or prophesying so we we or praising god but um we usually really um stick with praying for the holy spirit and trying to fill them up um, and trying to get them to speak in tongues until they really feel like, oh my gosh, I'm speaking in tongues. And I often say, like, we try to explain something that's supernatural. It's very hard to even understand tongues. But when you receive it and you, like, speak it out, all of a sudden the people are like, oh my gosh, I totally get what you're talking about now. Like, I, I'm just speaking it. And so, anyways, that would be our, our normal process. But, um, sorry, I just, I- since we're running out of time, I just want to, like, do you want to just well, I just wanted put to a say ball on that about one? tongues? Um, it's such a wonderful gift empowerment from God because I was told I had the Holy Spirit. Well, did I have the Holy Spirit? I don't know. Maybe the Holy Spirit was on me, around me, but had I been indwelt with the Holy Spirit, I'm not so sure. But when I spoke in tongues, boy, that that sealed the deal. I knew, and I walked out of that home where a lady prayed for me. And I remember the feeling I had. I now know absolutely for certain that the Holy Spirit lives in me. Mm-hmm. And I was one of those Christians who was like, oh, I don't want the Holy Spirit. I don't want to pray. In- well, I thought I had the Holy Spirit. I said, I don't want to pray in tongues because that's weird. My friends will think I'm weird. I don't want to tell anybody. I don't want that. Mm-hmm. And then God slammed me with, I have a gift for you. You say you want more of me. You want more from me. You want all that I have. But you're rejecting my yeah. gift for you and that really hit me hard and that caused me to start to seek tongues and so when people come to us not only do we want it to be an um, affirmation that they've received the holy spirit but it is actually we say a gift but it's an empowerment it's a tool praying in tongues is powerful it builds up your spirit it opens up things in the supernatural realm Mm-hmm. Um, it speaks God's perfect will through your spirit to the Father. Yep. And you don't know what to pray. The Holy Spirit prays through you God's perfect will. And Emma has um, been able to um, interpret our tongues. And it's beautiful. And it's so um, clear that it's that she's getting a clear interpretation because I know my daughter. It's not her words. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> she's not that them. good at English. Sure, so I'm not that good. <laughs> it's, so, it's so beautiful. And I think, wow, okay, I just want to pray in tongues all the time because yeah. listen to what I'm praying and I don't even realize. Yeah, I was just going to say, too, you know, with the whole um, uh, imitating other people's tongues or even just opening your mouth to try to pray in tongues, you know... God's not just going to say, oh, you need to get baptized and your body just gets flung into a baptismal and you're baptized. You know what I mean? You actually have to. Really? <laughs> not of our knowing. Okay? I'm picturing that. Right? I haven't <laughs> seen that yet. But, you know, you actually have to step into the baptism, uh, the baptismal or the pool or whatever. And you have to make that cho- choice and you have to step out in faith. And so it's the same with the Holy Spirit. You have to open your mouth or start to speak. It's a partnering partnering with God. And one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit is self-control. Control. So like I've talked about, like you see these churches where people are rolling around on the ground. Um, unfortunately, that's demonic. And that's not the Holy Spirit because that's not self-control. Literally, you hear those people say, I just can't control myself. It's like, well, that's probably because you not knowing what the Holy Spirit looks like invited a wrong spirit. Not to get too in-depth of that, I will say, if any of the things that we're saying strike a chord with you or maybe like, uh, the way they're kind of referencing things, I, I disagree. If you really, really care about having the correct doctrine, then please go check out all the work that I've done in the past about all these separate things because this is more of just, if you've listened to all those, just us kind of talking about applying them. We're not talking straight from the Bible today. We're kind of just talking experience. Um, But it's because I've done all the work in the past 10 episodes, nine episodes to cover what the Bible says about these things. So if you do truly care before you rebuke, 
um, check out those things because you know we're definitely leaving things out because this is you know this has taken nine hours of episodes to and talk Taylor, about. And Taylor, if I could just say that I was one of those people, I didn't believe it. I, I didn't think that was for today. Mm-hmm. I didn't believe the power of the Holy Spirit. I didn't believe in the supernatural, and um, I started to ask that question: uh, Do I try to make the Bible fit into my life? Or am I trying to make my life fit into the, the Bible and what the Bible says? Amen. Um, and, and you can't know that unless you know those scriptures, unless you know what the Bible says. And you got to go and read it for yourself. Please, please, please. If there's anything that sparks a chord with you here, do not take our word for it. Mm. We are not infallible. Yeah. Go back to the scriptures. Yeah. Read the word for yourself. Don't totally go ask cool. your pastor. Go into the scriptures. Read it yourself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. God gave us this Bible so we could understand it for ourselves we don't just need somebody to tell us what it means he will reveal himself to you and i think we have not we i mean i think god has done um enough works through through our bodies as vessels to be able to say that um the way that we for one it's not the way we do it the way the bible talks about it but if you're in that place of like well i'm not i'm still not sure um the way we do things is the only way that we've ever seen anywhere there be actual results. And now, don't get me wrong. Some people have had certain results in the church, but it's not. It w- I would say it's more a 20, 80 percent. Like one person gets fully free when they literally ask Jesus into the heart. But we don't know how God works. Some people are so willing and open. But in general, the way that we have done things because we're looking at the Bible and trying to apply it that way, I would say it's more of an 80, 20 or even 90, 10 of people that walk away from here, they do receive true freedom. They actually walk out their faith. They become different per- people. I was just telling one of the people that we've been discipling for a while that you, I kind of forget the person you used to be because I didn't really know this person, but the day you came to get baptized, you were like completely different, like not at all. And now like your life in the span of nine months is completely different and you've actually seen results and i'll tell you what most people in the church and i'm including probably you listening have not seen the results that you wanted and not that it's about getting everything you wanted but i think you who are still listening know that god has promised you freedom and because you're not experiencing that you're thirsty because you have faith in god that he will give you that and that's the key this is this process is the right process from the bible and it's the only process that can grant full freedom and full surrender uh to christ and that's the bottom line and that partnership exactly um i just wanted to encourage anybody that if you sense that there is more than just going to church and doing my devotion in the morning um if you're wanting more from the lord Mm -hmm. ask him if somebody told me even maybe well certainly 10 years ago maybe even five years ago that this would be my family's life, that my husband wouldn't drink alcohol anymore, that my daughter would be hearing from the Lord, that my son would have a podcast and speaking about Jesus and, and wanting not to help afraid people, just being selfless of, and helping people. Of the rebuke and that our family would, um, that that would be our main purpose. I could.